students uh, finally we have it the ca syllabus has been changed the curriculum has been changed and a lot of students have been asking me about the changes as to what are the changes whether they should convert themselves into the new syllabus and so on and so forth so this shout out has been made to give a few clarification to the students so that they can make a better and well informed decision now institutes step towards changing the curriculum has come out possibly at the right time if not a little late uh, this has been due for quite some time and we have been expecting this move for quite some time so finally it has been made and we welcome the decision now the industry has been complaining for quite some time that the curriculum of the ca institute is outdated and possibly may not be fully relevant to the economic scenario which is prevalent now the feeling was that the students were gaining generalized knowledge in a whole lot of topic and at the same time they were not gaining specialized knowledge in any one particular subject let's take an example in the existing syllabus the students were doing a little bit of costing a little bit of accountancy financial management and then you had this uh, subject on computers which is iska information technology they were doing some law as a result of it what we were gaining were was a generalized knowledge on a whole lot of things and there was this factor of specialization which was absent from the syllabus now what the institute has done is they have given the student a choice a choice of selecting one subject of their own choosing which they can choose depending on the area that they want to specialize in now let us have a look at the current syllabus and then let's have a look at what the changes are being proposed to be made now let's have a side by side comparison of the old syllabus vis-a-vis -vis the new syllabus let's take group 1 first now group 1 under the old syllabus comprised of four papers group 1 under the new syllabus also comprised of four papers the four papers under group 1 the old syllabus were financial reporting strategic financial management advanced auditing and professional ethics corporate and allied laws whereas under the new syllabus under group 1 you have financial reporting which is the same as the old syllabus strategic financial management which is again same as the old syllabus advanced auditing and professional ethics again same as the old syllabus paper 4 has been renamed as corporate and economic laws well it's just not only a renaming which has happened they have included certain economic laws into the syllabus if we go to on to group 2 now group 2 is the place where the maximum changes have taken place first of all paper 5 which was earlier called as advanced management accounting is now called as strategic cost management and performance evaluation then paper 6 which was information system control and audit has been scrapped and instead of that now paper 6 will be an elective paper that is the paper which you can choose the institute has given a choice of a few papers out of which you can choose any one as paper 6 now what are these elective papers we'll just discuss in a few moments paper 7 earlier was direct tax laws now they have renamed the paper as direct tax laws and international taxation which are with a mark segregation of 70 marks for domestic tax and 30 marks for international tax the gut feel here is that the paper would still remain the same but certain topics which we were earlier also studying under direct tax like your non resident taxation arms length pricing double taxation avoidance these topics pertaining to non resident taxation would possibly come under the sub topic of international taxation for 30 marks then you have paper 8 indirect tax laws that remains the same however with the introduction of gst 
we are likely to see the new topic of GST coming into this paper. Now going on to the elective papers, the institute has given a choice of six papers out of which you select one depending on what you prefer your area to, of specialization to be. The first paper is risk management. Second paper is international taxation. Third paper is economic loss. Fourth paper is financial services and capital markets. Fifth paper is global financial reporting standards. And sixth paper is a paper on multidisciplinary case study. Now, please remember, you have to select any one of the above. So the total number of papers still remain the same. The differences, information systems and control audit, the paper has been eliminated. And instead of that, you have to now select one of the following six elective papers. Now, which paper you would choose from out of the elective paper would obviously depend on where you want to specialize in. Now, this requires a little bit of discussion so that you can really think about it and take a decision as to which paper you would want to select out of these elective papers. Now, having seen uh, the new syllabus and compared it to the old syllabus, we now come down to the discussion on the elective papers. Now, which of the papers the students need to choose will obviously depend on the area of specialization that they want to achieve. Uh, let's take these papers one by one and discuss a little bit about them. The first paper, the first elective paper, which is risk management. Now, risk management is a critical function in institutions like banks, financial institutions, etc. So obviously, people who are looking at taking up jobs in these areas would be at an advantage if they took up or specialized in risk management. Then you have international taxation. Now, please be very clear on as far as international taxation is concerned, while this sounds really exciting, however, you need to be absolutely clear on the fact that if you choose to specialize in international taxation, then it is imperative that you find yourself an opportunity for working in one of the big auditing firms because that is where you will get the maximum opportunity to specialize and hone this skill which you have learned during the CA course, that is international taxation. There is no point in specializing international taxation when you uh, intend to be associated with a small or a medium sized Indian firm where all you are going to do is filing returns of individual or domestic companies or uh, as, uh, or firms. Then the third paper you have is economic loss. Now in the recent past we have seen an increasing trend among students to take up law course after they complete their CA. This is because of the increasing complexity of the legal framework in which the organizations are operating now. Uh, more specifically with the introduction of bankruptcy code, the Benami Property Act, the Money Laundering Act, the legal system has become quite complicated and it does uh, help for a CA to have a legal background uh, in order to understand the implications of the financial transactions uh, that he is going to monitor. So economic loss is uh, would be quite useful for students who intend pursuing uh, law after they do their uh, CA. Then you have financial services and capital markets. As the name suggests, uh, this is for students who want to make a career in financial services and capital uh, markets. Uh, having said that, I have had a look at uh, the, the subtopics which the Institute has included in this paper. And I'm tempted to say that a lot of these topics seems to be prima facie theoretical. Uh, one needs to really look into the material which will be issued by the institute before one can take a call on this paper uh, because uh, i have seen topics where they have included merchant banking investment banking private equity funding now these are topics which are typically uh, very theoretical uh, in their approach 
this paper doesn't deal with valuations, which are obviously dealt with uh, your strategic financial management. So this seems to be a theoretical paper, and I'm not really sure how much value it is going to add in terms of analytical ability of the student. Yes, it might give him a a uh, theoretical background about uh, various aspects of financial services but as far as the analytical aspect of it goes i would really need to look into the material which is going to be issued by the institute shortly and then take a judgment call on uh, this paper uh, then you have the fifth paper which is the global financial uh, reporting standard now this would be useful for students who uh, aim at going abroad for building up their career uh, this uh, particular paper uh would give them a exposure to the global financial standards the ifrs and therefore it would place them at an advantage when they are seeking job opportunities abroad and then the last paper multidisciplinary case study very little has been published on the institute's website uh, as far as this uh, course is concerned therefore i would really reserve my comments uh, on this paper till the time i see the material on this uh, ha however having said that uh i think this would be a more broad and a macro based uh, paper where you would deal with uh, issues relating to taxation or finance and the questions would be based on case studies uh <clears throat> while this does not seem to be imparting any specialization skills it it is uh more aimed at testing the analytical ability of the students but it does it wouldn't necessarily uh, give you specialization in one particular field now to sum this all up it is my personal opinion that students should shift from the existing syllabus into the new syllabus purely because of the fact that any student who registers after july would obviously be coming under the new syllabus and he would also be appearing for the exams in may 18 now if you are a student who have already registered under may 18 and you are going to appear in the old syllabus and there is another student who is appearing in may 18 and he has appeared in the new syllabus then please remember that he has a slight additional edge as far as these topics are concerned because really speaking in the job profile not much importance is given to uh, your specialization in uh, uh, iska that is information systems and uh, control audit uh, not much significance is given to that uh, as compared to that i guess a slightly more weightage would be given to a student who decided to uh, specialize in, in in any one of this so uh it would be nice to shift into uh the new scheme and choose the paper according to your uh desire for specification in a particular area however before taking any decision on shifting i think it would be pertinent to really wait and look for the materials which the institute come out giving the chapter break up and the type of questions that are included in a particular chapter and having a more detailed look at this topic before we take a call on this